So now, let's work with something called visible lights. So in real world scenario, if you were to work with the light source, you actually see the light rays as well. That is what visible light setting does in Cinema 4D. So let me take something uh, like a light right here, a regular light, and let me just drag it upwards. So you see that the light is here, and if I were to render this out, you can see that the light is actually signing from the top, but there's no fog of it whatsoever. So you can see that there's no fog whatsoever for this light. So let me just uh, enable the interactive render reason for this one. So let me just go over here so that it only renders this part. So I'm going to go on to my light settings right here. I'm just going to delete the target because I'm not using any target light. So over here in the light, I'm going to enable the visible light. Here you can see that there's visible light turned off. Let me just turn on the shadows as well so that you can see uh, that it more realistically right here. So I can see the shadows as well and the area. So I'm going to go over here onto the visible light setting and let me just choose visible. So what that does is you can see that it is immediately visible right there. So that is what visible light does actually. Uh, volumetric light on the other hand is much more realistic. You can see that there's light rays coming off over here while in visible light, it does not actually take the uh, objects in mind. So there's no light rays right whatsoever here, but you go to volumetric light, you can see that there's visible light over here. There's a bit of a rays according to what you actually see in the object. So if I were to move, the, uh, move it aside, you can see that. Let me just move the light closer right here, and you can see that it actually takes place into effect just like that. Looks really cool, just like that. So now let me just go to the light setting. There's another light that you want to choose as well, another type of visible light, and that is inverse uh, volumetric. So inverse volumetric, what it does is that it only illuminates the light rays right here. So you can see that the light is coming off here, but here you can see that there's a bit of a rays going on there. Really good for some sort of effect. So let me just go for volumetric uh, metric right over here. So there's some other settings right here, like in visibility right here. You can see that they can control the brightness, the sample distance and everything else. So let's see what that does. If I decrease this out, you can see that I can decrease the amount of sample distance. So if I were to decrease it really low, like here, you can see that it only focuses that uh, that side. But if I were to increase this out, you can see that the sample area actually increases. I can decrease the brightness of the light right here, just like this. So right now it's 74 percent. But if I were to go something like 10 percent, it goes down much darker, just like that. So it controls the amount of light right there. So let me just go something like 50 percent right here. You can also increase the dust right here, as you can see. So the light becomes much more dusty. I have to increase it. I need to make sure that this is a bit more darker. Uh, so let me just make it something like 10% and you can see that the light gets a bit of dusty right here. I can also increase the dithering right here to make it more noisy. But anyways, let me just go over here, keep it to somewhere around 50%. Dusting, let me just decrease that, that down to 0% because I want a smooth light really like that. So really gives an interesting effect. Uh, just like that. Let me, if I were to copy the light, you can see that I can have two light sources just like that, which is quite soft. So let me just work with one light. And over here, you can also use something called gradient light. So if I were to click on this, then you can see that right now the light ray is this white. But if I were to go over here, select some other color like yellow, for example, and press OK, then you see that it starts yellow and ends up white. So let me just interchange this and it is quite opposite as you can see right here. So it is yellow on the center and white at the end. If I were to go over here just like this, you can see, let me just increase this out a bit and you start seeing the variation in color. Let me choose something else, some different color such as red so that you can see the effect. So if I were to say it, you can see that everything is red and I can change this to something like blue and you can see that effect as well. So once I press OK, you can see that there's the blue tint right over here and the red tint. You can also add in more colors right here and make it look interesting, kind of like a disco light right here and it affects the object as well. So over here, just like that, let me just render that out and let me just drag it out over here so that you can start seeing the difference right over there. All right, there you go, three color lighting, just like that. Drag it on to the left and there you go. There's another type of lighting right over here.
just like this. So that is how you can work around with the lighting just like that. And additive is useful when you use multiple lights. So they, the, the lights just blend in all together to create interesting effects just like that. So this is what lighting settings actually does. So you can use the fall off or not, that is up to you. So if you use the fall off, you can see that it is much more realistic. Turn off the fall off and then it is not realistic much. Let me just turn off the fall off as well and let's see how the results actually look like. So I can go over here on to uh, the general tab right here. Right now, uh, the, this is the visible light and the details. Um, let me just see where the fall off is. Yeah, the fall off inverse sphere, just like this, and that is much more realistic as you can see right there. So let me just go over here and use inverse uh, for that one as well. So on the fall off, let me use inverse square, and there you go. You can see that it is much more natural, just like this. And I can work around with its um, volume right here and that gives out a unique effect just like that. So this gives a uh, light source as well and the effect right there really gives out interesting output just like this. So let me just zoom this in and you can see that how this looks. There's a bit of a flare, a glow and then everything else. So you can work around with multiple sources of light right here to come up with this kind of effect. So let me just change the type of the light here as well. So let me go over here, let me select the light itself first and change the uh, type of the light source right here. So I'm going to go to general. This is Omni light right now. If I were to change it into spot, you can see that this looks totally different now over here. So I can increase the size and you can see how this actually looks like, just like that. And that's how the spotlight looks like. So let me just increase the intensity right here. And there you go, that's how it looks now. So let me just go 100% and there you go. So over here, there's visible light, volumetric and everything. Let me just change it into volumetric itself uh, so that the rays are seen as well. So there's spotlight, there's infinite light over here as well, which is, uh, mimics the sunlight. And there's area light over here as well, just like this. And you can work around with the lights just like that. So everything works around. So you go to the visibility right here. You can change the colors and everything else. Let me just change this out and drag this on to the side just like that so that you get bluish tint all over so go over here you can see that there's the blue tint right over there the red tint and so forth remove it on to the side you get a different effect so that is how you can work around with the visible light sources and come up with different effects so i'm going to go to the general and omni light again and you can see that everything else is quite different so that is how you can work around with volumetric lightings and its settings inside of cinema 4d hope you guys learned something as always and as always please like comment share and subscribe